Hello, my fellow mushy blobs of earth dirt. My name's Hans, father of plants, hoarding all the teal bricks, and pretentious Lego builder. Today I wanted to show you guys my Lego garbage truck mock, and with its operational side loader. Uh, it's going to be for my Paradisa City, a city of the future in the year 2060. So put on your fuzzy socks and let's talk trash to each other. Okay, first things first, the origin story. Some of you guys might recognize what this used to be. Set number 4432, a really awesome garbage truck from Lego in 2012. I think it's their best garbage truck to date. Yeah, it's a pretty cool garbage truck, but disappointingly, it's a rear loader, not a side loader. And we all know side loaders are super cool. Now, I remember when I was 15 years old and I moved to a town that had garbage trucks with automated side loaders, and they were super cool. And of course, this was in the 90s, and um, I've always been daydreaming, trying to figure out how I could make garbage trucks with little side loader arms and to grab the garbage cans and or at least pretend to dump the trash in the side bin. And of course, this was in the 90s, and so all the, all the garbage trucks, or all the vehicles were four studs wide back then. And I even remember trying to conceptualize using those pentagraph arm pieces to kind of like grab the garbage cans. But of course I never had the pieces available to me to uh, to even build it. And it's always been something I've wanted to do, you know, since the 90s. And also before I dive into uh, showing you guys my garbage truck and this operating side loader, I definitely have to give a big shout out to the automated garbage truck on Lego Ideas that just recently passed 10,000 votes and is now in the next round of review by LEGO Ideas. I want to give them major, major, major credit for this operational mechanism, which is where I got this from. That garbage truck is super awesome. They came out, uh, I think it was a couple of years ago, it's a father and son duo, and they've been promoting it, and um, you'll even see a review of it on Beyond the Brick YouTube channel, as well as JK Brickworks YouTube channel. And when I first saw their garbage truck, my mind was completely blown at how they were able to pull off this operational side loading mechanism with only one input gear. Totally genius. And I just want to say that if it wasn't for them, my version would not even exist. So I would just want to give a huge round of applause to the father and son duo. I have been a supporter of that garbage truck and I'm so glad that it got 10,000 votes of support. And I really hope that LEGO Ideas does uh, produce that truck for them because they deserve it, they've earned it. That truck that they created is totally awesome. Okay, and another thing is, if you've seen my previous videos, I'm uh, going to be building my LEGO City, Paradisa City, and it's a city of the future in the year 2060. So some things that I've already announced in my previous videos, uh, if you haven't seen those, go ahead and check them out. Being a city of the future, everything, all my vehicles are gonna be electric vehicles. They're also gonna be autonomous vehicles so they can completely drive themselves, no driver needed. And so that's what this is. Here you've got the autonomous driving sensors. I know in real life you won't actually see those sensors on vehicles for the most part. I really like this robot sensor face. To signify that these are autonomous vehicles, I'm having a lot of fun putting these little sensors on the front of my vehicles. The other thing is on all my industrial trucks, you're gonna see these large giant batteries on where normally a fuel tank would go. But these are not fuel tanks, these are massive, massive batteries. Uh, that power the truck. Now, of course, electric garbage trucks do actually exist today in real life. There are some major cities around the world that have already been implementing electric garbage trucks. Hamburg in Germany, New York, Sacramento, California, Shenzhen, China, Los Angeles, and a few more that I probably uh, missed have already begun to commit to fully electric garbage trucks. And one of the bonuses to an electric garbage truck is they're quiet. Yeah, a lot of people complain about how loud and noisy garbage trucks are with a lot of that noise coming from the big diesel engines that they have. Now, I would like to point out that even though this originated from my set, pretty much nothing of the original set remains with the exception to say like the cab area, but pretty much everything else has changed. Now, I do have my default mods that I do to almost all LEGO industrial trucks as soon as I buy those sets, and that is going for the bigger wheels. I explained that in my previous ambulance video as to why I do that. Wheels that they've been using are too small with the use of six stud wide vehicles. And this to me, these speed champion wheels are the perfect proportional size 
for large industrial trucks. And here is another example of my speed champion wheel conversion to uh, other large industrial trucks that I have. Okay, so why didn't I just build the garbage truck from the Lego Ideas? And well, I just wanted to build my own version. And one thing was I didn't really like the cab on the truck for the Lego Ideas. It has a very kind of, I don't know, 1970s look to it uh, to me. And since I already had this garbage truck, I just thought I would just modify that. Uh, to be to ha include the side loader. Another thing about the Lego Ideas garbage truck was the proportions seemed off to me, and I know why. Uh, it's driven by this whole mechanism. But on their tr garbage truck, the side loader occupies about nine studs worth of real estate. And so uh, my major goal when I set out about building this thing was to get the side loader as compact as possible for better proportionality. And on theirs, the back half, the container is actually really short. It kind of looks stubby to me. Um, I think it's about six studs or maybe it's eight studs. And so that was my goal, a more modern looking cab, a shorter proportional hopper and trash grabber, and then a much bigger trash container in the back. The original garbage truck has a lot of this lighter green color. And I forget the official name of this color, um, but it's mostly this color on the original garbage truck. I ended up going with this much more brighter color, and I think it works for my Paradisa City as well, which Paradisa City, being a tropical city, uh, uses more vibrant colors. However, I do like this color, and I did keep it in several areas. Another cool thing is that uh, this printed piece right here also has that color, as well as a darker green color. Another one of my default mods that I do to all my vehicles is moving the drivers from a central position to only driving on the left side. A lot of times this requires me to do extensive modification to the cabs of industrial trucks in order to pull that off because a lot of times these seats are sitting directly over the the wheel arch here and of course since this is a city of the future i have also been adding computer screens to all my vehicles uh, and basically if you've seen the tesla electric vehicles they have uh, very large touch screens in their vehicles and so uh, that's pretty much what I do. Originally, I did have a joystick in there. Uh, so this was what I had in, in there in place of the computer screen uh, was a couple of dials. And then this here is the joystick in which you would operate the mechanism. But since it's a fully automated robotic grabbing mechanism and he's got his touch screen right there, there's no need. All right, so let's talk about this genius little mechanism here. So let me just kind of give a brief summary of how it works. It's essentially a dual action mechanism with a single input. So you have a turning knob over here on an axle drives these two 90 degree gears, which then drives these two 90 degree gears. And on an axle down here, these two gears are meshed together to open and close the, uh, the grabbing mechanism. And what ends up happening is that when the mechanism is fully clamped closed, they are opposing each other. They essentially lock up this whole mechanism and prevent anything from turning. And so when these two are jammed together, then these two little gears in here can't turn. And so it locks up those two gears. And then of course, those being on the axle here, this axle gets locked up and therefore this gear gets locked up. And of course, since these two gears are engaged, they are locked together. Now, this gear is on this axle. However, there's nothing stopping this axle from to continue to rotate. And then that's where the second dual action occurs so that when this is all locked up and this axle can still spin freely, what it does is it now goes into the operation of lifting the whole arm and dumping the trash. Now there are a couple of nuances with this dual action mechanism. And that is that the torque that operates both mechanisms is going to go towards the path of least resistance. So whether it's driving this mechanism or driving this mechanism, it's going to go towards the one that is giving it the least resistance. So if it happens to be that this mechanism gets bound up or it has slightly more friction than this mechanism, then it'll start to operate this mechanism uh, before this mechanism is even complete and also vice versa. So when it's in the fully up position, if this is providing too much resistance, then this will end up releasing the garbage can prematurely and letting go. Now, one thing with my particular uh, style of garbage can grabber is that when it's in its folded away position, it actually puts the center of mass behind this axle. And so sometimes when I go to activate it, it'll actually kind of lift this guy up. It's already putting a small amount of torque on it. And so of course the torque 
uh, going through the mechanism is going to go towards the path of least resistance as this is reaching out to grab the trash can. This is relying on gravity, the weight of this thing, to keep the arms closed around the garbage can. In some of my earlier iterations, whenever it got to a certain point up here, then the gravity of the arm would shift in this direction, and then that would end up causing the torque to go towards the path of least resistance, which would be these grabber arms, and it would end up releasing the garbage can while it was still in the up position. So it's essential that most of this mass is kept on this side of the pivoting axle. For the most part, those little nuances don't really uh, cause this thing too much trouble at the moment. I think I've pretty much resolved that. So I'll go ahead and show you how I, I went about and, and built this. Uh, first thing I'll point out is that this is a garbage truck of the future. In today's garbage trucks, the garbage truck man will operate this mechanism using a joystick from within the cab, and he is watching the whole mechanism as he's doing the operation. But in this garbage truck of the future, the garbage truck guy doesn't have to do anything. The robotic sensor will automatically see, recognize the garbage can, where it's positioned, and it'll completely operate this whole mechanism all by itself. It'll be a fully automated process. As I said earlier, I wanted to make this mechanism much more compact than what's in the original automated garbage truck idea set. To do that, I use the much slimmer bevel gears, and I also use this uh, 90 degree bevel gear differential piece, and I was able to mount uh, this whole mechanism using these two Technic beams to the side of the truck. Now on the original set, it had two grabber arms that were symmetrically equal, and that's what forced them to have this positioned all the way over here, was because of the full width space of the grabber arm that was needed, and it had to be centered between these uh, two wheels. Of course, I wanted this to be uh, compact and proportional, and that forced me to create an asymmetric grabber arm design. I ended up having to move this wheel one stud forward. In the original set, this glass piece is two studs wide and it has now been minimized, or I just rotated the brick. It is now just a one stud wide glass window. For the asymmetric grabber arm, I found it really useful to use this little rubber piece, but it just barely clears the wheel here. And of course, then this is a much longer arm and it has the room to, to tuck away nicely underneath the truck. So basically what it's doing is it's kind of sweeping around the back side of the garbage can to grab it. And then this part of the grabber arm swings in and kind of swoops it into the into the pocket there. Now, I built this garbage truck back in March and I went through a good six different iterations. And in each iteration, it got better and better. Now, originally, I didn't want to have anything here. I just wanted it to be um, as flat as possible to the side of the truck. But I ended up having to add these because when the garbage falls out of the garbage can, it needs this surface to kind of define reflect off and into the hopper. Uh, without these pieces, a lot of the garbage would either hit these gears and not make it into the hopper and they would just fall right out. So in the Lego Ideas garbage truck, they do have this piece here. So let's talk about the hopper itself. Now the Lego Ideas garbage truck has a much better hopper. In a lot of ways, it is a much better set. It, I think their mechanism is much more reliable than mine. And they also have that cool function where the hopper moves in like a ram and pushes the garbage in. Originally, I wasn't planning on having any motion uh, from the hopper itself. I just designed a ramp and then the garbage would just fall in and slide into the, the rear container. However, I did decide to use this ramp to act as a door to close off this rear container. So in order to do that, I needed to create a mechanism in which it could help me grab it and tilt it up. I did add a little lever arm underneath it to help push it up. And then you just grab it with your hand and it now closes off the, the dumping container. And here you can see it's just a simple lever arm that rotates and pushes up on that door. The door does kind of hit this on the way down. It's just a light interference. So moving on to the garbage container, I wanted to increase the size of the trash container so that internally it would be six studs wide. And that to me uh, seemed like a good proportion for containing a lot of trash. I kind of don't like how in some vehicles, you know, you've got one brick thickness here and one brick thickness here, and all you're left with is just four bricks in thickness um, for containers. And I wish I could get more volume inside. And uh, so this is what I came up with. I'm ba basically just using a bunch of brackets and of course some tiles and plates along the side there. I got a little mono tail light right there because it's futuristic. And of course I got tail lights here and the 
hazardous flashing lights up there. I also liked using um, these little ingot tiles. And of course, I added some structural ribs to the container itself. I'm using the contoured roof components. And because of this hinge mechanism, I wasn't able to add another one of those pieces here because otherwise it would have raised the roof one more plate and they didn't want to do that. So I ended up coming up with this, but then now this, these two tiles here just look kind of terrible. It doesn't match with the rest of the roof line. And of course, for wind resistance, I added an extra wind deflector up here on the top of the truck, which I think looks really cool. Another thing about my particular mechanism design is that it does allow me to use just about any shape for a container. It will grab it. And that's with the help of the, the little rubber piece, as well as the arm that comes around and grabs it. Another thing is I was able to get away with not having to use the inverted tile on the bottom, as seen in the Lego Ideas set. And one thing that helps me with that is the fact that this here acts as a stopping edge when it grabs the container then this little stopping edge will prevent it from falling inwards when you go to dump the trash. I'm super stoked with this garbage truck. I had a lot of fun building it and designing it, and it took me a while to really work hard to come up with a very compact mechanism, as well as an asymmetric grabber arm. It definitely wasn't easy, but I gotta give a ton of kudos to the original garbage truck created by the father and son that has now made the Lego ideas list. Two thumbs way, way up to those guys. So on that note, if you guys liked my garbage truck and you like this video, or if you have some comments, uh, go ahead and leave some comments in the comment section below. Hit the like button button and go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell because I got a lot more mocks and content to show you as well as my parody the city which I'm working towards building so thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later take your trash